Creating a chart in Excel is very simplistic. Basically, it's up to you to make it simplistic. For example, you see my data here. It's not disheveled or unorganized. It's all tightly knit together and very structured. For example, I don't have Maggie here down on row 16 and then the quarter way up here on H2 and quarter 3 down here and all over the place. Got my ducks lined up all in a row and all in a column. And because I really organized it here, it looks logical. Excel will be able to help me out. So the first thing I want to do is to create a chart by clicking and dragging and selecting all the data that I would like in my chart. There's a couple of ways to create a chart. The first way and the easiest way is to select your data and then hit F11 on the keyboard. But before I do, you can see down at the bottom I only have two worksheets, the DF cells and sheet 2 with nothing on it. The moment I come back here and have it all highlighted and then hit F11, boom, I already get a third spreadsheet down here and it's called chart 1. It's got the names all in color, so Maggie's in a uh, kind of a, like a light blue purple. Over in quarter 1 you can see she made some sales here and in quarter 2 a little bit more and when you hover over it it gives you that little pop-up window that tells you exactly how much or the value of that column there. So we've got quarter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Hover over any one of the bars and it gives you a little pop-up there. It says this one's Carrie, who's in yellow. And the quarter total here is the purple bar. So we really set sales here on this quarter for all four employees. And then the total here, if I go back to my sales sheet, it's still here. You can see that there's the total, the quarter total for 1, 2, 3, and 4 for Maggie, Bart, Carrie, and Doug. Now that way is the first way and, well, the most simplistic. You can have two different types of charts. You can have what's called an embedded chart, which we could have the chart just basically embedded underneath our data sheet here or underneath our data or the way we did it by default. The good news was is that we could create this really fast. The bad news is as well, by default, it gave us the column chart here but on its own worksheet. Now if I want to move this around, say I want this embedded on the DF cells, well, when in doubt, right-click. For example, I can right-click on this chart here, just about anywhere. If I right-click on the lines, it gives me a different menu here than if I right-clicked right, well, somewhere in the middle, but not on the line. And then I can go down and left-click on location. And you can see right here it says, do you want it as a new worksheet or as an object? I don't want it as a new worksheet. It already has a new worksheet, chart 1. So I'll select as an object, and you can see these little pictures. I don't know if you noticed them before, but see this one has a little tab? That means there's a new worksheet. And you see a little chart in here that's actually embedded inside a worksheet? Well, that's an object. And I can click my drop-down arrow, and I can choose which worksheet I want to embed this chart in. Let's do DF cells and then click OK. It does two things. It deletes the worksheet chart 1. It's no longer down at the bottom. The second thing is, is that you can see it's an embedded chart now. So I can click and drag this chart and pull it out underneath here. And then look, it's got it highlighted for the most part. It didn't include employees, EE here. It's got the quarter one through the totals, all in pretty colors here. So I can click off in a blank area. And a few things more I can do with this embedded chart. Well, the least of which is to right click and say location. I want it as, well, a new worksheet and call it chart two, then click OK. Totally pulls it out of the DF sales data sheet here. It's completely its own worksheet. Now the chart is linked, so any changes that I make, for example, I'm going to hover over this little bar and it's Maggie 3000. I go back to our data sheet here for DF sales, change it from 3000, maybe something like 10,000 or down to 10, and then come back here and she's not even on the chart because if you look at the area over here, I mean we're talking tens of thousands, so it's going to be very minute. But I can come back in here and let's make it 10,000 and then come back here and you can see by hovering over it, that's quite a bit. Now how does it know to determine what we want to set this up as? Well, it does it by taking basically the longest bar here, or the highest total, which is 100,000, and trying to keep it in your eyesight. In other words, it's not going to do it by penny, one, two, three, four, five, otherwise you'd be scrolling up forever, and that doesn't help. So it takes the longest total here and tries to compress it. In this case, it was really simplistic for Excel to say, look, let's do it every 20,000 here. Let's go back to creating a few more charts here, different ways to, to create a chart, and then when that's finished, we'll quickly cover how to format this or to make changes if you need to. So I'm going to go back to my DF cells. The other thing to do is to basically select the data that you want in the chart. In fact, let's just do it, the data itself, and not put any headers in here. So we have our, our x-axis headers, which is quarter one, two, three, and four, and then we have our y-axis headers, which is, well, 
the employees. So by default it knew how to figure that out, but I'm going to go through this time and just do numbers, and I'm going to use the chart button here instead of the F11. So I'm going to click on this chart wizard button to start the process. Like any wizard in Microsoft, it's going to ask us a few questions, we give it the answers, and then it puts the best possible output for us, in this case a chart. We have one of four steps. You can see over to the left hand side we have different chart types like pies, bars, columns. Um, FYI, we will do a pie chart, but one thing you want to know about pies is that it can't handle all this information here. If you want to create a pie, you can see that it just has basically, well, a few slices. It can't line up everybody's information next to each slice like a column can. For example, when I select column, I can click on this button, press to hold a view of the sample. And you can see those columns like we did just a little bit earlier on on that chart 2 worksheet, that each person has their own column and they're all grouped together under one quarter. Well, what if we selected pi and clicked it? Now, it's going by quarters here, the slices, but they're not side by side comparing with the quarters and the employees. So, my rule of thumb is if you ever use a pie chart, basically in this case I would select one line item, maybe Maggie, and that's it. Maggie and the total, so I can just get the slice just on Maggie or, or the pie, or a pie for Bart, but not for all of them. For all of them, I'm going to choose something more detailed like the column or the bar going to the right side, press to hold to view the bar. In any case, select one that you really like, and I'm going to keep it simple and go with the column chart, maybe something like 3D, and then I'm simply going to go ahead and click Next. Now the next step is, is to define what the names are. For example, when we hit F11 on the keyboard, it automatically down at the bottom put, like for one it would be quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, that's the X axis. And then the Y axis, instead of series one, two, three, four, five, would actually be the names. But they're not defined here. To define them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the series tab, and you can see I've got series one, two, three, four, five, which is one, two, three, four, five down here in the preview window. I'm going to start with series one. And the first thing is, is who is the name of Series 1? It's going to be Maggie here. So I'm going to click on this, what they call Collapse Dialog Box button. In other words, when you click it, it collapses. And then I can go and click on Maggie, hit Enter on the keyboard to pop it back up. So now instead of calling it Series 1, for, and I don't know if you can see that, the kind of light blue purple, it's now named Maggie. So this little bar right here is going to be Maggie on each quarter here. So we're just starting to define these names. So I can go down here to 2, click Collapse, and choose Bart because, well, he's not Series 2, he's Bart. Then hit Enter. But before I get too far, I'm going to go back to Maggie. And I also want to define the series not as 1, 2, 3, 4, but as the actual totals. When I move this out of the way, we have quarter 1, 2, 3, 4, and the total of all quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this Collapse, and I'm going to say that this is the name, the x-axis here, instead of series 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it's going to be this. Hit enter, and then once I do this for 1, it's going to update for all. And you can see down below the headings for the x-axis, and this is the x-axis. If you remember algebra, x is going to be horizontal, y is going to be vertical. So there we go. And then when I go down to BART, it keeps the x-axis labels the same. So it's going to be quarter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Looking good. So I can finish up here real quick and do, go to Series 3 and click the Collapse and it's Carry, Enter. Series 4, Collapse, Doug, Enter. And then Series 5 is the total, but eh, maybe I don't want it, so I can click Remove. Or if I'm like, oh crud, I really would like it, I can click Add. Now even though it adds it back in, it's missing values because the easiest thing to do is to probably start all over again unless you get familiar with clicking and dragging to select your values. Now the values for series 5 which is the quarter total when I click the collapse I'm going to have to click and drag to select it again. It's going to be the four quarters. In fact I'd like the total for all four quarters as well and then hit enter. You can see it now adds in the purple here and it still has it as named as series 5 but the name isn't series 5 it's supposed to be this quarter total. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the collapse and select the name, hit enter. In any case, if everything looks good, I'm going to click next. And then I got a couple of tabs up along the top to customize or have more options for my charts. Do I want to give it a title? It could be DF Sales. 
the moment I type it in, I wait a few seconds or I hit the tab key, it'll actually pull it in here over in the preview window. Now what do I want to name the x-axis along the x here? Maybe we want to spell it out in case if nobody understands what Q's are for, then hit the tab key. There's quarter. If you want to find out what the z-axis is, basically the z-axis is going to be well, it's not going to be the vertical axis, the Y. The Y doesn't give it to us because we're in 3D setting. But we could still type something in here that looks like it's the Y axis by saying this is going to be dollars. And then give it a second or two or hit the tab key and automatically puts it in. I'm going to delete that. Next is the axis. So would I like category X axis to automatic? Do I want to use the categories or do I want to time scale it? And you can see down below in the preview window here, it updates it. So there's the time, 1900s, categories, which is Q2, 3, and 4, or just automatic, which is the default. And you can uncheck the value Z axis, and when you do, you get rid of it. And again, this is a 3D chart. If it wasn't 3D, I would have, well, the series Y axis. So I'll check that to include that in. Grid lines, you can have major grid lines, minor grid lines, it adds more grid lines within the 3D chart. You can see it in the preview window. Also in the uh, value Z axis, so it's going horizontal or 2D walls. The legend, where do you want to position it, choose it, or don't have a legend. Data labels, now you can have labels at the top of each of these. In other words, by eyeballing it, if we're doing a PowerPoint presentation or somebody's looking at this, they wouldn't be able to tell where it tops out as. They'd have to guess, let's see, that's about 21,000. Well, unless you hover over it with your pointer, hover over the bar that is, or this column here, you won't be able to tell what it is. So maybe you want to put some names on it. Here's the series name, so it names each one of these, and you can see how it's bunched up quarter total. We can give it the values, so now it bunches up with all the values up at the top. And we'll leave it like that, even though it looks ugly in here. Also, category name, but we'll leave that unchecked. And then finally, if they need a little bit more guidance here, you can check the box legend key, and it adds a little dot next to it, which the color is matching the color. You may not be able to see this, so I'm going to hurry and roll through this. Finally, the data table. Do you want to show the data table or not? And that's kind of fancy, where it gives you it by table here. But I'm going to uncheck that, try to keep it as normal as possible, and click Next. Finally, the last step is, do I want to have this chart as its own worksheet, or do I want to have it as an object within the worksheet I'm working on right now? So I click Finish, boom, it puts it right there. What a mess, right? It's a gob of goo. So to fix that, we can click and drag the lower right-hand corner handle to keep it proportional. I mean, you could click and drag the others to stretch it out just a bit. But I'm going to keep clicking and dragging. And this has got to be one huge chart because the numbers are so bunched. It might have been better to have it on its own worksheet. So those are two ways to create charts. Either hitting F11 on the keyboard after you select your data, of course. Or select your data. And in this case, we selected part of the data and then use the chart wizard. If we selected all of the data, which I recommend, and then use the chart wizard, and then we press to hold, automatically it fills in all of it for you. For example, if I click Next, I don't have to use the series because it got the series all right for me. I don't have to sit here and click the Collapse dialog box and choose my X labels or X category here. In fact, click Next. The only really tough decisions I have to make is either on the options, if I want a legend or not, or if I want titles or not. And then finally, whether or not I want it as its own worksheet or as an object here, and then click Finish and then click and drag to put it somewhere close to the chart. And like I said, any changes you make in the data here will actually update here. So this is the 10,000 10, for Maggie. What if we did 100,000? And then hit enter, automatically pushes it up. Also, it looks at the value axis here, the Y axis, and says, well, to keep these numbers together or to keep it so you can look at the chart without having to scroll, we're going to increase the value here to 50,000. But if I do change the values down to 10, it tries to update it, match it accordingly. Of course, everything else looks smaller. And you can still hover over these bars to get the idea of what the bar is, the total, the value, which I think is a lot easier than actually putting in the values themselves. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up.
And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face. You can also click here to support me. So for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free. And for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.